Only recently in the West have historians of the fighting arts attempted to shed light on these often mysterious forces. One such pioneer is Robert W. Smith. During the late 1950s and early 1960s, while working for the CIA, Smith had the opportunity to film many famous masters of Chinese boxing. One of them was Huang Shu Jin, a huge, maybe 285 pound chap who would let anybody hit him in the stomach or kick him anywhere they wanted to. When you ask him how he was able to do this with a smile, he'd simply say, Chi. But by far the most memorable teacher I met was Professor Chen Manqing. He, by virtue of teaching for a long time in New York City, had a large following throughout the world. I was able to get very close to him and uh, to watch him, and uh, he was the softest of the soft. Chen Manqing's life is a testament to the power of qi. As a young art teacher in Beijing, he contracted a debilitating lung disease. Fearing for his health, he began studying Tai Chi Chuan. Within a year, Qing had regained his health. In the following years, he would refine his practice and become one of China's most famous boxers. He was able to anticipate whether a person was planning to attack, getting ready to attack, attack imminent, or attacking. Four different states. He was never defeated. He took all kinds of challenge matches. He hated fighting. Chen Manqing, it was said, could root his chi into the ground and by redirecting his opponent's energy, easily send a man hurtling backwards. He did it by relaxing and shifting your strength through his body, down through his rooted legs, into the concrete. So in essence, you're pushing not a man, but concrete. I know this for a fact because I was one of the pushers, and I've been photographed in that posture. Some teachers have taken Tai Chi westward and often found scientific, not necessarily mystical, reasons for its effectiveness. C.C. C. Chen was one of Chen Manqing's earliest disciples. When I was studying with Professor Chen, I always thinking about his magic man, his, you know, invisible man. At nighttime, he probably fly around the room. So after I stay with him for two years, I find, him, find out him, he's just as normal. The secret William Chen has discovered is in how the parts of the body work together body mechanics. And nowhere is this more self-evident than in the practice of push hands, two people trying to throw one another off balance. An exercise that a much younger William Chen practiced with his teacher, Chen Manqing. I respect him because of mechanics. And I was, when, when he tell me to uh, stay there, let him push, then he will push. But if I, he tell me to resist, so his body was leaning forward more, he needed more leverage. Besides being the youngest of Professor Chen's senior students, he was also one of the few to utilize Tai Chi as a competitive fighting technique, winning several prizes in various freestyle Chinese wushu fighting competitions. Punch, right, so turn, stay in. And the most important part for the Tai Chi or for any uh, martial artist, that in order to speed it up, you have to slow down. You have to relax. Otherwise, the muscle tense you up, and then that will slow down your punch. My son sees the father able to fight, and he wants to learn, learn and fight. In high school, there's a lot of fighting's going on. He wants to learn you know, how to fight. William Chen has passed on his legacy to his children, Max and Tiffany. While Tiffany competes in push hand competitions, Max has taken his training into the ring. But William has also passed on something more valuable than fighting technique. 
if you're a girl, you don't have to, you know, say, well, I'm good, nobody gonna beat you. I always tell people, I say, well, anything I could do, everybody could do. So sometimes they even could do better.